All right, here we go. It is another galactic fried chicken Bearcat Journal nightcap. I'm Chad Brendel. Whew, I'm glad I waited. If I didn't did this at our normal time tonight, video would have been good for about 10 minutes. But instead, we have a lot to talk about. But first, let's talk about galactic fried chicken. Galactic fried chicken is out of this world. But located just two miles from downtown Cincinnati, in Dayton, Kentucky, they serve jumbo tenders, breasts, wing, thighs, leg pieces, sandwiches, sides, salads, spirits, and our addictive galactic sauce in a fun retro diner atmosphere. That, that, that's all great. The chicken's phenomenal. We, we, we go regularly, and uh, we, we love it. And that's a big part of... Uh, our sponsorships here, here are, we, you know, we make sure they're quality. We make sure they're good stuff. I know a couple of you went and tried out Galactic Fried Chicken today, and you loved it, and I'm not surprised because it's really, really good. Um, closed on Tuesdays, open the rest of the week, closed on holidays, and closed for Bearcat Bowl season because they're like us. They're huge Bearcat fans, and they, uh, they go to bowl games. So let's get going. Uh, which, which one's the lead here? Which one do we start with? I guess, I guess we'll, go with, we'll go with football. Um, sources are reporting Marcus Freeman is expected to be named the next head coach at Notre Dame. Uh, as we talked about last night, that was, was what made the most sense uh, with them retaining their, their strength and conditioning coach. They've also retained Tommy Reese. As their uh, their offensive coordinator, they retain their tight ends coach. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't do that if you're hiring from the outside. That, that's what you do when you're hiring from the inside, and you're working towards that uh, that that final end game. Uh, my guess is they are ironing out details and uh, finalizing contract terms and, and all of those things. So we won't have an official. Uh, announcement from Notre Dame it doesn't sound like for another day or two, but, but don't panic. Everything in this situation points to Marcus Freeman being named the next head coach at Notre Dame. And uh, you know what that means as a Cincinnati fan? It means Luke Fickle is going to remain the head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about the, the market changing and being, you know, levels of concern with, with all the jobs that have opened up. But there really are two. Notre Dame and Ohio State, when it all comes down to it. And one of those two has come and gone. And, as, you know, Marcus Freeman's going to get a while uh, to, to turn Notre Dame into his vision. And so that takes Notre Dame out of the mix for a while. And if he's successful, pretty clear, you know, they're, not, they're not looking to make moves. So, you know, Marcus Freeman could be at Notre Dame for a while, and I fully expect Marcus Freeman to be successful. So, um, once this all gets, you know, the details get ironed out and becomes official, huge congratulations to Marcus Freeman, first off. He was phenomenal to me uh, in his time at Cincinnati. I consider him a friend, like I said on Twitter. Uh, I'll always pull for him. So, Notre Dame picked up a fan. And uh, best of luck to the Irish, and... Thanks, Marcus. Like this couldn't have worked out long term any better. He he went to Notre Dame to be prepped for potentially being ready for a head coaching opportunity. He only had to go for a year. Now he's the head coach of Notre freaking Dame. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So happy for Marcus. Uh, basketball. Woo! Bearcats escape two late shots in the paint and beat Miami 59-58. Uh, in a night where they, I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. I believe they slashed 36% from the floor, around 27% from three, and two of 10, 20% from the free throw line. Takes a lot of toughness to win a game where you shot under 40% from the floor, under 30% from three, and 20% from the free throw line. That was a good Miami team. You know, we, we, we talked about that, um, you know, on all the various outlets uh, leading up to the game. That's a, that's a solid Miami team. They returned their top nine leading scorers from a year ago. They beat Georgia Tech earlier this year. 
So to go in there, not play well or not not shoot well, and and come out with a victory, that's big. And they also they trailed. They were down, I think, eight at one point in the second half. Uh, so they they showed some fight. They showed some toughness. They played great defense down the stretch. Um, they, I, I think at one point. Miami had missed 12 of their, their last 13 shots. Uh, I know they, they made a layup shortly thereafter, but I think that's the only other basket they made down the stretch. For me, if you've been following Bearcat Journal for a long time, you know I, I've long said one of the biggest keys to winning in college basketball is your team's ability to get stops in the final five minutes. And this team did a great job getting stops with the game on the line. And uh, they, they get the taste of losing out of their mouth, they get, a, they get back on the winning track, they've got a game on Sunday, and then Crosstown Shootout. They're going to have to play a lot better on, on the 11th as we get to the Crosstown Shootout, but we got a lot of time and a lot of other things going on before we get to the Crosstown Shootout. So that's, uh, that, that's pretty much it. I think, what, David DeJulius had 12, 14 for Abdul Ado. You had 14 for Jeremiah Davenport. Ado actually had a uh, Ado, 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 Ado. Uh, actually had 14 points, 11 rebounds. So a double double for the big fella. He was he was critical in kind of opening things up. I, I thought Miami did a great job keeping Cincinnati from getting downhill uh, in their ball screen coverage. They were switching some. They were kind of soft hedging some and, and passing back off. But they were cutting off the downhill lanes, uh, especially for uh, Mike Saunders and for David Julius. And it, it, it messed with the Cincinnati offense quite a bit. Um, and kudos to them. I thought their, their game plan was well executed. Uh, you could tell they were, they were ready for Cincinnati. They, they, were, they were hyped up about this game, getting a chance to get Cincinnati on their home floor. They almost pulled it off. But, uh, you know, West Miller's Cincinnati Bearcats get back on the right side of victory, and uh, they get a big, a big win uh, over Miami. That's a team that could, could very well win the MAC, or they'll, they'll be right there. If they don't win the MAC, they'll, they'll definitely be right in the mix. So uh, that's going to about wrap it up. I don't think there's much else. Uh, oh, JQ Hardaway, now a four star, and 24 7, he's a four star in the composite. Um, 24 7 moved him up to a 93. And the number 170th player in the country. That is a huge jump for J.Q. Hardaway and for the Cincinnati recruiting class. It gives them their third four-star in this class. Derek Shepard, Mario Eugenio, J.Q. Hardaway. So defensive tackle, rush in, cornerback. That's how you build defense. That, that's exactly how you build defense. And you, uh, you get your program stocked up at those positions with as many high-end guys as you can get. So, there we go. That's going to wrap it up. I will see you tomorrow night. It's the BCJ Nightcap. Right here on BearcatJournal.com.